God's Country right here on the Cinnabar. Today we've just got a fabulous shoot planned for you. I, I promise you, you're really going to enjoy this one. But first, I want to show you a picture that just recently surfaced that was taken in the latter part of the 1800s right here on the ranch. Well, here we are today on the exact spot where that earlier photo was taken. If you look over on the right hand side of the road, you can see just the roof line of an old building tucked up against the hillside. That's a blacksmith shop and it's the only building that's left from that earlier photo. There was a barn over on the, on the left hand side of the highway, but it got just demolished when they built the highway in the 1930s. The big barn that's over on the right hand side of the highway replaced it. It got uh, hauled 12 miles from town up here to the ranch. But the real story today is this 1873 Winchester. It's from the same era as that photo was. It's been in the family for generations and it must have come out of a building like one of these old barns or a line shack or some homesteaders cabin out here. Because when I dug it out of the safe a few years ago, it was absolutely covered in red rust from one end to the other. The action cycled, I haven't a clue how, because when we took the side plates off, it was just full of gunk and corrosion. The brass carrier lifter was, was just green. And I tried to put a bore light through it, couldn't see a hint of light through the other end. This thing was just full from one end to the other of a bug's nest. They just desiccated bugs, a thousand of them probably. The bolt um, or the firing pin was rusted into the bolt solid. So I had a decision to make, just leave it like that or clean it up at least cosmetically or make a decent wall hanger. So I took this gun apart and I had it apart for weeks in the shop. Soaking it in, in, in penetrating oil and croil and taking fine brass wool and, and cleaning the rust off of it and trying to leave the patina behind. And it turned out really well. Um, and surprisingly, mechanically, it's, it, it was in very, very good shape. Obviously, there's some corrosion in the bore. <laughs> Who knows how long that bug's nest was in it. But the chamber looked good and there's still good uh, lands and grooves even if there is some pitting and corrosion. But I just put it away after that and it's always kind of bothered me a little bit that I, I didn't ever take it out and uh, see if it would shoot. So today I've got a treat for you folks. We're going to invite you along and take this up. We're going we're gonna to do a little more testing on it just to make sure it's good and safe. And then we're going to see if this old girl will shoot. I'm sure it hasn't been shot in at least 100 years and maybe more than that. I think it's been in this family for better than 80 years now. So. Um, stick around, stay tuned, because this is going to be really fun. If this thing checks out and we get to shoot it, um, you know, what an experience that'll be, huh? So here we are with this wonderful old relic. Getting ready to shoot it for the first time in what's almost certainly more than a century. There's that 30-inch barrel out there. And she's, she's not a high-condition thing of beauty, but you should have seen it a few years ago when we first started on it. Never would have dreamed when I first pulled it out and went through it that uh, we might even have a chance to, to shoot it someday. And it's only fitting that today we're shooting in its natural environment. The gun that won the West, right out here in the wide open spaces of the West. Okay, now the moment of truth. Now, we're talking about firing a rifle that almost certainly hasn't been fired in over a century. So I can't overemphasize safety have a gun like this checked out by a competent gunsmith before you fire it you know it's just if you don't know take it to somebody who does and have it checked out now we've gone completely through this gun have it completely disassembled back together everything's functioning properly we've checked the headspace and the headspace is good and of course that's usually not an issue with, with something as light as a 4440 um, the bore's not great because of course it had bugs living in it and it had a big bugs nest in it but actually the lands and grooves are pretty good even though there's a little bit of corrosion the chamber looks really good so this is our procedure when we fire one for the first time um, just to be on the safe side because 
the last thing we want to do when a gun we're not absolutely positive about is put it right up next to our face, the receiver, and put our left hand right out in front of the chamber and touch it off and hope for the best. So this is our procedure. We've got we've got a target down range here to see if it, it'll make a little round hole. Um, we set it up in the lead sled here and then we'll we'll single load it. And then I've got what I call my finger extension, a little steel rod with a hook on the end. And we'll stand back a little bit, get our hearing protection and eye protection on. And we'll see what happens. First time in a century, at least a century. <laughs> well, it looks like it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Let's get down range there and, and check out and see if it made a little round hole like we hope it did. Yes, sir, it looks like it made a good round hole just like it's supposed to be. Let's tip that up where we can get it in the sunlight. Yep, how's that for a 140-year-old rifle that had a bunch of bugs living in the barrel at one time? So let's get it uh, loaded up and see if it cycles. That'll be the next big test. We'll go check out that brass, too, make sure that uh, the chamber looks real good because uh, the brass will show it if there's any problems there. So here's a question for you. How many cartridges does it take to fill up the magazine tube on a 73 with a 30 inch barrel? Well, here's my answer. I'm really not sure. I don't know that. So we're going to find out together. Let's, let's give this a try. You know, the 1873, of course, is the, is the next model up from the 1866, which was enormously popular. Um, and there are not a lot of changes, really. The, it's still got the toggle link action. Of course, we have a, a, a steel receiver rather than a brass or, or actually uh, more accurately a bronze alloy receiver on the 66s but the big improvement was in cartridges to the center fire cartridge now they first came out with um, the 73 and 4440 and then later on introduced the 3840 and the, and the 3220 to give them a little more flexibility um, but this was a, a vast improvement over the the 44 Henry rimfire cartridges that were available in the Henry's and the 66's. One of the things I'm a little concerned about is if this thing was left loaded for years on end, the uh, spring in the magazine tube could be a little uh, weak, and so we'll see if it it will feed all, all of these cartridges. Boy, it's taken a bunch. <laughs> Well, that looks like it right there. So let's see, there's 5, 10, 15, 17 cartridges all together. So the correct answer on um, the capacity of a 30-inch barrel 4440-73 is 17. Wow, here we are, ready to shoot this old girl. I've waited a long time for, to get this opportunity. Let's try that closest one first yes it works and ejects we get steel with it <laughs> oh this is great unbelievable this old gun's firing again oh I missed one that's talking too much there we got her let's hit some steel again Got one out rolling around on my hat. There it goes. All right, this is great. Oh, we'll probably better finish that one off. Oh, she's being obstinate. Got its neighbor. <laughs> oh, we got a got a ricochet that time. Let's try that one over on the ground. There, we put a hole right in it. Blew the cap off about 20 yards. Well, that's it. Oh, we, oh, oh, we got one more. Just didn't quite feed right. 
<laughs> oh, killed it. Last one. So that last one, that's, that spring was just a little bit weak to push it all the way through, but wow, that's just amazing. After all these years and in the condition that this rifle was in, to be shooting like that again, what an experience. What a great shoot. So I noticed we just winged a couple of those jugs out there. And the rule of thumb is that uh, if you wound something, you got to finish it off. So I just couldn't stand it. I loaded up another 17 and uh, we're going to take another uh, another shot at these, uh, these old jugs here and see if we can't finish them off, put them out of their misery a little bit. It's hitting it, but it's not knocking it off because it hadn't got enough weight to it. <laughs> Just going through them. We better get some of them full ones in. <laughs> well, let's get that one on the left. Oh, it died good. Better get back to steel, I guess. Okay, this one better have it. Ho oh. ho! Unbelievable. Unbelievable shooting this old gun after all these years. Oh, that last one again. It doesn't want to quite go. I'm going to see if I can shoot that one on the right low enough to knock it off. There we go. <laughs> oh man, this is this has just been great fun. Well, that's just about as much fun as I've ever had shooting. I'll tell you what, after uh, all these years, to shoot this old rifle again was really just almost a religious experience for me. You know, I, I, I've talked to people who, when they find out that, that I collect old firearms, you know, I get this all the time. Boy, those are really cool. I, I'd love to have some, but I only want guns that I can shoot. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I own a lot of modern guns as well, and, and really those are just kind of a tool. But if you want to enjoy shooting, this is the kind of gun that you, that you ought to have, you know. And, you know, if you have an old gun like this or you, you buy one, you know, make sure again, safety first. Make sure it get checked out by a competent gunsmith if you're not sure that it's in good fireable condition. But take it out and enjoy it. That's what they were built for. They weren't built to sit in somebody's closet and so, or somebody's safe and just draw dust for years and years on end. Take them out and enjoy it. I mean, this is, this is so much fun. So, uh... Again, if you're interested in, in Winchesters, do yourselves a favor, join the Winchester Arms Collectors Association. The information there is tremendous. The expertise that is shared from those people is invaluable. Well, when I was setting up right on this rock, there was a great big old fat rock chuck. So I'm going to shut the camera off here in a minute and I'm going to take this old gun hunting again for the first time in a century. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.